right, hey there. We're gonna see if we can get some people added. Um, sent out some of the invitations, and so we should be able to have people added pretty, uh, the invitation should have come to many of your um, email, and so you should be able to have your invitation, um, just accept the invitation and go from there. If um, the invitation has come to your email, then you can just uh, select it and, I mean, uh, like accept, and you will join the call. And I'm going to open my email right now just in case anyone else has sent their uh, Google Plus um, account information. And then we also have the live chat. So you can, I mean, uh, you can, if you accept the invitation that's been sent to you, then you will be able to join this broadcast. I've got seven viewers right now, it looks like. But if you would accept the invitation that came uh, to your email, not not the not the link, just the link. But if you'll take like when I you had just got a Google Hangouts call invite for me, so it should have been ringing. In fact, I'll add it again. Let's try with um, I'm gonna add Hannah and uh, Brittany and a couple of other people. And let's see. And so right now, when I send this through, if you'll select, if you will accept it when it comes to you, then it will enter you into this Hangout, and so we can. Um, interact directly with each other. Lanisha, uh, it's coming to you. And uh, Julie and Lauren. So, let's see. So this, when and when it comes to you this way, it is help because it will, um, if, if, you, if you can join with me this way, then you can just ask questions really, really easily. But there are a number of different options for asking questions. So you have the chat on the side. I'll enter um, uh, a little note. I'm saying here's a little a chat bar if you have questions to post or if you want to make sure um, you, that you get credit for being one of the viewers because some of the viewers will be able to watch anonymously. And if you do that, that's, um, that's helpful. Um, but you can send me an email right after to you if that's easiest. Uh, credit. Okay, so you got a chat option right within the Hangout, which is one option. You also have a chat option on the uh, pay the YouTube page. I'm sorry, my brain's a little scattered because I've, I'm working across a few different pieces of technology right now because I'm trying to get in my email to make sure that we have access to all of your um, okay good Jennifer I'm sorry and I, I know you've sent yours before so I appreciate you resending you've got um, an invitation coming to you right now it should be ringing and if you just accept that then it should uh, allow you to add directly into the Hangout. Caroline, you got one coming too. It would be great. It is really, um, it is really so much easier if you just accept that and come into this because that way we get a little more direct interaction and you don't get the lag between um, posting something in the chat and uh, um, post something in the chat, asking a question in the chat, and then uh, ha having someone have me see that it's been posted. But the other thing is, along with that, is if anyone sees that they have, um, if they see a question from someone else that they know the answer to in one of the chat bars, and you feel like I've missed it, if you'll um, answer it, it's a big help. <laughs> It's always nice when we can work as a community together with these pieces. So, we've got a number of viewers. The viewers are um, popping up, so we've got that piece covered. We've got this one chat open uh, for people who are not in the who are not in the full hangout, but they're observing the hangout. And then we also have the option to um, on the events page. You can also post. Um, questions there in the chat open uh, for people who, sorry about that so if you uh, like Jennifer and Lindsay thank you we've got some oh, hey, got someone. hey there hi if, um, 
if you will pause the the uh, not this not this one this one we're together you and I but if you oh, okay. if you just pause the stream on the other I had to do the same thing if you pause the stream on the um, the YouTube that was uh, rolling for you then we won't uh -huh. okay I think you've already got it done it sounds like one second okay I paused it. So I paused the one on the YouTube, but I think it's still just me and you. That's good. It is still just me and you. And that is fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping that we are going to get um, the other. I've got I'm, I'm just recent um, invites to Lindsay and uh, hold on. Who have I got here? Carolyn. Yay. Hey. <laughs> this is so I exciting. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my car. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing Yay. this. You're brave, both of you, and I appreciate it. Um, oh, yeah, no problem. See. This is cool. I like this. Yeah, it actually is a great – well, the thing is that it is um, – uh, you, you, we won't be able to get everyone in, but we will be able to get um, – usually I can get as many people or as brave enough to come in in a small class. And we've got a pretty small class this time. But it makes it a lot easier because you'll get to just ask your questions directly any questions mm -hmm. and it's a lot of, like the chat is uh, chat bar is nice and it is nice for people to be able to go back to watch it later um, if they can't do it right now but it is a, a whole lot easier if you can just ask and get your questions yeah answered. okay so, all right, so I've recent to um, everyone except for one I'm gonna say, I go back to so thank you for doing this. This is fun. This is cool. Well, and and this will be. This is it's you know it's kind of, um it's kind of annoying to do it tonight. I know folks like this part of it's kind of annoying. Hi. Hi, <laughs> it's okay, I you can see the shots and so on. But after we can get people in, well, this will be. This is it's, you know, it's kind, of, um, it's kind of annoying to do it tonight. I know so this is the thing. If you will just pause the stream feed on the YouTube page, like that events page, you can see like your chats where people had been chatting. If you'll just pause that, then you won't get the feedback. So you'll just hear this part. Okay. All right. So tonight, what we were going to, what we, what the, the purpose of tonight's class, and we'll do a, a few of these hangouts. And, um, the, class is, the hangout session is an opportunity to talk some about the content from the class and when a class gets when a class does a really good job of participating in the hangouts then we can do more of the content like the reflection discussion here versus discussion board but in our first class together like this because I use this in a, a, a few different classes but in our first class together like this usually what we use the hangout for is to answer questions about assignments and to provide any contextual information that's kind of hard to get from static content in Blackboard. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So if you could just say yes, you don't have to call me ma'am. That's really nice of you though. Um, okay, so let me see. I've got two more people I want to add one more time, uh, Jordan and Jennifer, and then we'll go straight into the, um, let me send one more invite here because, well, I think I don't have, I think I don't have either of their, um, Okay, so, oh, I got Jennifer's here. It just came through. Jordan, if you can hear me, if you will email me your um, the the address you used for uh, Gmail, I will invite you again. I couldn't find it when I went through my um, when I went through the emails that had been sent to me, but it is entirely possible that I overlooked it. All right. Okay. All right. So here we are together, and. Um, in this class, we'll be discussing counseling theories. This is your class that's focused on counseling theories. And sometimes people take the theories class as one that's like a checkoff. You know, like it's a, um, oh, I won't really use this in my um, real life. Uh, you know, my, like my uh, actual practice as a counselor. And that is just not the truth, not the case at all. Theories actually end up being really, really important to us, particularly if you are um, – I'll try Lindsay one more time too. Particularly in cases where you find yourself subpoenaed, 
because of some something that happened with a client or if um, uh, some, even, even if it doesn't involve you directly, if something happens with the client externally and you're called on to testify, one of the things they will start with initially will be to establish your credibility. And part of that process in court of establishing your credibility is going to be to reflect on your, to ask you to speak about the theoretical framework you operate from. Like, you know, what, how does your professional knowledge inform your practice? And theoretical framework is a, provides you with, when you have a good understanding of your own theoretical framework, it provides you with a very succinct explanation of why you do what you do and how you make determinations about how to proceed with clients. So while most of us get to counseling and the field of counseling because we're just kind of drawn to it, you know, naturally it feels like a good fit. People come to us a lot and with questions. Oh, I've got a little problem. Hold on one second. I've got a little a boy with a cut hand. Oh, I'll be with you once. Um, we'll show you. He's got a little blood. So let me check this out. I'll be right back. Okay. You can talk to each other for me. Poor little man. Did okay, who's on here? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Oh, hi guys. Hey, <laughs> I keep switching and putting off face Like, yeah. I, okay, I don't even know how to work this thing. I literally just got it like a second ago. I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. how yeah. do I work technology? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I forgot we had this discussion, honestly. I I mean, I knew that we were having it, but I forgot it was at 530. So. Well, yeah. on, uh, on the discussion board, it said, like, there's two different days. I was like, is it Monday or is it Wednesday? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it, I saw that you posted your uh, Get 5 assignment or Give 5 assignment. Was it hard for you to find the information or no? I mean, honestly, I just read the chapter and then kind of like put, like highlighted what I thought was most important. So, um, like it took me to kind of film the video. But yeah. The information. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, um, now that I'm like, I was one of the last people to sign up for the assignment and I wasn't sure that, like, I'm surprised that you wanted, not that you wanted to go first, but like, well, kind of that you wanted to go like during the, like, like the second week. Yeah, I, um, I don't know. I just, I really wanted to sign up for cognitive behavioral, but that was taken. Mm -hmm. So I like looked, like glanced over at the room and I was like, oh, okay, well, sure, why not? Go for it and like, get it out of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm currently in the gym parking lot because I was going to go. Oh my gosh, okay. Hello. I was going to go to the gym and then I was like, wait a minute. I know we have something to do. And I was like, okay, all right, I need to do this. And so I'm in the gym parking lot. Um, There's Planet Fitness. And <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I just saw my coworker and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, Matt, cool. <laughs> School. Oh, there, there, goes, uh, there goes all your data. I know. Like, I don't have Wi-Fi right now. I don't know what's going to happen. This is not cool. My phone is, like, really getting hot, so I'm, like, afraid it's going to... More laptops. Like, yeah, it's working hard. The, the fan's on full force. <laughs> yeah. Are y'all in Greenville? I'm actually in Cary right now. What about you guys? I'm in Greenville. That's awesome. I am too. Where, wait, where do you live? I live um, off of, um, it's near, I live um, on off Highway 33 right now. Okay. So it's like where the new Walmart is, but like a little bit past the new Walmart. You know what I mean? Oh, cool. Like they have a new Aldi over there, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got one. Nice. Uh -huh. cool. okay, I know. I'll keep talking for just a minute. Give me just a second to get um, <laughs> resettled. I'm sorry. Um, so, so we have a little uh, serious cut, but uh, he's going to make it. Bring his, uh, <laughs> blood off his face. Sorry. <laughs> okay.
Okay. So, so you're, in this class, what you'll do is you will, um, I'm sorry, to, and I know you were having a conversation when I broke in. So oh, you're fine. You're fine. Thanks for working with me um, in this. Okay. I'm going to add one more, Jordan, and then we'll get back to business. I would like to tell you that it is not always this chaotic. And it will not always be this chaotic, but I will tell you this summer we are working on Dr. Crow and I are working on a big grant and we're working on a big um, project with Dr. Avon Harris. And so uh, right now it is more chaotic around the office than usual and that kind of you know kind of bleeds over. So but moving forward with your theoretical framework. So in this class, what you will get to uh, is a succinct theoretical orientation. Now you're gonna when you turn at the end of the class, you'll prepare a final project that allows you to uh, kind of use metaphor to represent your theoretical framework, and you'll explain that framework uh, pretty thoroughly. But but what we know is that once you can really explain why you do what you do, you can say that pretty clearly in just a few sentences, and that's what you want to get to. Is that you want to get to that point where you have such a clear understanding of um, how you make decisions about your work with clients and students and families that uh, your your understanding of how you make meaning of the, of the experience and your ability to reflect that back or to share that with others uh, that's part of your professional identity and that you're really really comfortable with it and able to do that pretty quick okay, okay. but to be able to do that you got to utilize you got to really spend some time with the theories and you're in a summer school class so it's pretty slammed. Cover a lot of theories really quickly. And some of those theories you'll be able to rule out pretty quickly, like, hey, this is totally not me. But then others, um, that, that that is going to take you a little longer to determine, is it the right fit for you? What pieces of it make sense? And are there pieces of those theories that you'd like to carry through to be a really comprehensive, integrated framework? Right now, do you find yourself, and if you are not in the uh, video part of the Google Hangout, that's totally fine. But if you will uh, type in the chat bar, those of you that I can see in the chat here. Really? Um, we got somebody. Lindsay, great. Lindsay, if you'll just pause the uh, live, the stream, the YouTube stream, then it'll stop the feedback. But for those of you here, you can just say, and for those of you here in the chat, you can just kind of type, you can type it in the chat and we'll see it. Are there any theories coming into this class that you think that kind of resonate with? Some of you have been in professional experiences where you've learned a little about theory about theory or you've been in undergraduate degrees that allowed you to learn a little about theory. Um, so right now, are there any that you feel like you can rule in or rule out? Well, for my readings, um, I was reading um, in my intro book actually, and they, um, cause that's like in the third chapter and that's the most recent. So I was reading about some of the theories last night, and I definitely can rule out like psychoanalytical th uh, therapy. And um, I think that like the person centered is like I can relate to that better than mm -hmm. like psychoanalytic. Um, I just think that I mean, it's the I don't know, it's just a lot <laughs> better than the psychoanalytic for me right now, and also with the um like existential as well I just think those are better but I haven't I mean I'm not you know 100% sure yet but that's you're right where you need to be you have some sense of like how you operate as a person in the world and what makes sense to you and um, what seems more like a, a, a far stretch right psychoanalytic mm -hmm. some of the uh, unconscious pieces maybe pieces that um, you don't see fitting directly into your practice as much as others like person centered person centered be a more comfortable fit for you. Right, that makes sense. How about for others? Um, I kind of, I agree. Kind of yeah. Um, the person-centered, like where I work right now, they do person-centered plans. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just learning how to do those, I understand it more. I'm like more, I, no, I don't want to say well-versed because I really don't really know much about it just how to do the paperwork part um, but I like the idea of goals for a specific person instead of like a template you know mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something that I would be comfortable with and I 
probably would have an easier time um, explaining. Um, yeah. And it, like, we're in our own word, you know? And it resonates with you. Like, you, you feel a pretty common connection, like a, a pretty comfortable connection to that sense of tailoring your practice to the client that's in front of you. And how following the client's lead, helping the client um, unfold their, uh, allow their story to emerge through the process. Mm -hmm. Just like all oh, about them and like, because I, I mean, a lot of the clients that we have where I work, their lives are so different. You can't just slap a template on them and say, well, this is what worked for 10 other people. It's not going to work for them because maybe they, I mean, they don't live in the same part of town and X, Y, and Z is happening with their family. So yeah. Makes sense. That makes perfect sense. How about you, Hannah? Um, yeah, I would actually, I would agree with Michelle, um, with, uh, kind of ruling out psychoanalytic and, um, my, I guess, focus this week was on Adlerian, um, and so that really, uh, that really resonated with me, but also, um, CDT, or cognitive behavioral, um, which is a popular one, I know. But um, I, I haven't really uh, read a lot on it, but I have um, kind of like gotten up almost front seat to it, if you will, because of volunteering. Um, and so a lot of the therapists there practice CBT, and so um, I'd be interested in learning more about that. And do you know, uh, uh, um, it's good that you're having it is uh, good that you have the front seat, like the ability to do some observation and see how people are using it. Um, counselors, uh, the, uh, counselors all throughout their careers enjoy CBT. You know, people at all different points in their careers enjoy CBT. The counselors at the beginning of their careers often find themselves drawn to it because it provides a pretty clear structure and process for uh, engaging in sessions and engaging in treatment planning. So people got people like that initially when when. Um, Still gaining trust in your own skills and um, your own ability to read the situations. Sometimes that extra structure can feel very supportive. Right. Do you think that some people probably don't find, probably find that pieces, do you think it, that sometimes people find that pieces of theories fit better for them rather than one individual theory in and of itself? I think that's how I feel. Um, just because, like, what I do now, in families and um, just kind of working with them to help their child's development. Each family is so different, just kind of like what we've already talked about. Um, so I feel like I take learned. Um, not, I'm still learning about the theories, so I feel like it'll be really cool to kind of take what I'm doing every day and apply it to the actual names of the theory. So that's kind of where I am now, just understanding, you know, that process and how to label what I'm doing. And to thank, you, thank you for mentioning that, because that is a really big piece. That was mm -hmm. the first module where we had the um, PowerPoint, where you guys can answer questions about yourself. That PowerPoint mm -hmm. is not a superficial PowerPoint. It's an opportunity to really kind of reflect on what we believe to be true. And which of those truths we really, really hold close to us. Like we're not gonna it will always be part of how we operate. And the other thing it is, like what what you mentioned, Lindsay, is that piece of how how you not just what you believe or your philosophy or, or what you believe about human to human interaction and development, but also how do you operate practically. Uh, that those pieces will align pretty congruently with some theory. You you will find pieces of other theories. You may find pieces of other theories that are that are dissimilar from how you've operated, but you think can be really really useful. And so then you kind of shift yourself to um, to take those elements in. But in other instances, you're going to find things, and you're going to think, Ah, I've always done that. I didn't know that's what this was, or I didn't know I didn't have language to explain why I did that. Mm -hmm. But that's felt right. To me. That felt like the right way to proceed. And so now right. I have a framework for understanding how to, how to fit those people together. That's good. It sounds like you already have some trust in yourself. That, that is really helpful as a counselor. A little bit. I mean, what 
we use at my job now is called coaching and we just use like open-ended questions and try to get the family involved um, in the plan. And so that's kind of where I'm starting. And I, I feel like this class will really help me get more specific about my style. So, yeah. <laughs> I think it's true. I think it, um, that uh, Carolyn, you know, I think a lot of you will see that. that you, Hannah, like, many of you are gaining experience, even if it's tangential experience. You're in some way, you're in some way connected to helping service, helping the helping helping professions or services in helping professions. And um, in that, you'll you'll get to see what works and and. Um, also, kind of what you might want to leave behind. Sometimes you'll find some things that other people do or that you've done yourself that uh, may be less effective for you when you really start thinking about, like, how, how does it fit within your larger framework. The thing about integration, though, is that there are formal ways to develop an integrated theoretical framework. And we're going to learn about those in this class. It's not just that you're eclectic. You have an eclectic. Like, so if you're, if I go to court, if I'm sitting and I'm in court, and I just say I have an eclectic perspective, and I, I um, like an eclectic theoretical framework. So I use what works for any client. I just find what works for any client. Um, that that is a totally different process than the types of integration that we will discuss. Now we do have a technical eclecticism, where what you decide with the technical technical eclecticism approach of integration is that it's important to you that you be able to draw from a really wide range of techniques and when a client comes in you interact with that client and you ascertain quickly which techniques from which theories seem to be the right fit and you, you make that determination because you're well versed in a wide range of theories it's a harder approach to utilize than accommodative integration or assimilative integration but um, in the class, what we'll learn is that you've got, uh, you've got a PowerPoint that goes through the, the different types of, of integration. And with accommodative integration and assimilative integration, um, with those, you have an umbrella theory that is either um, modified as you, as you bring in other theories, other elements of other theories, or it really stays the same and those other theories just become some extra scaffolding. We're going to talk more about that in another class, in another uh, hangout session that we'll have. This week, what I really wanted us to focus on is kind of just to start thinking about um, why the how the class fits in your professional identity development, and then to think about that theory assessment assignment. Because the theory assessment assignment is an assignment that you work on every single week. And what people like to try to do is wait until the end. How the class fits in your professional and, and so then to think about that theory assessment. This might be in Jordan's theory. If you'll just pause it, it'll stop feedback. And what people like to try to do is. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so your theory assessment. With your, hey, Jordan. Hey, nice sorry. No, no, I appreciate you all keeping on persevering, even as you know, it's hard <laughs> I finally figured it out. Yeah, good. Great. Well, um, do you want to tell us how you finally figured it out? Do you have a tip that you think you can share that might help somebody else who's watching? No, I just tried, like, I went back and I, and I opened it up in Google Chrome, and then it finally worked for me, so... Firefox that it come up. So I think they must have an. So I was sweating, sweating because I usually use Firefox, but today at, uh -huh. um, I started trying to log on at 5:25, and it kept kicking me back out. And I thought, oh, well, I just need to update. So I updated, but still it wouldn't let me do it. So at 5:29, I got in and did the Chrome. But usually Firefox will work, uh, um, yeah. and and people usually have access to Firefox a little more readily. But today I couldn't get it to work. Okay, for the theory assessment assignment. The theory assessment assignment is both very, very brief. Like, when you, um, I, I'm gonna put so much emphasis on this assignment that you're gonna, people inevitably become confused and say, well, have I done the whole thing? Like, what am I missing? You have to, you, it's, not, it's not that it's so ex extensive in terms of how much you have to do, but it's really important for shaping how carefully you think about it. Okay. 
really not a huge assignment. It's a pretty small assignment, but it does span our semester, and it is really important to me that you do it uh, carefully and thoughtfully because it shapes how you think about the theory, how you assess the theory. Okay. So with the theory assessment assignment, you, you have a two-page Word document. It has a little chart that has the theories listed and different powers, like your explanatory power, your diagnostic power, your therapeutic power. Um, and it, all of those provide you with some piece of information about the theory. The explanatory power. When you evaluate a theory on explanatory power, you're deciding whether it's weak, adequate, or strong in the area of providing a clear conceptualization of function and dysfunction. And that's it. Like, does it have, does this theory, when you, what you've learned about this theory, does it provide a clear explanation of what functional looks like and what dysfunctional looks like? Now, on the surface, you might feel like, well, it's a counseling theory. Surely it tells us what's functional and what's dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. But what theories are, are as, as groupings of ideas into a framework that uh, over time, you, know, you have a primary theorist who's really, who really stepped to the edges, uh, the margins in some way to really present their theory as distinct and different from whatever other theories existed, right? Like, this is why my theory should stand as its own real theory. But they, but they, uh, but when they do that, when, when early theories that have been around for many, many years, some of those had a different purpose, but they've kind of been subsumed into our profession, into helping professions and the counseling profession. But they, they might have had a different purpose around which they were organized initially. History. Right? So if you get to a theory and it's, it's less clear that they have a, a, a theory, you feel like when you are studying this theory, therapeutic power, like a clear framework and methods for treatment, like that, that, that theory doesn't seem to have that, you are probably right. It may be that that theory's purpose was to explain meaning or some process, and it's not, it does, it's not rich with techniques. It, it's not strong in the area of techniques and methods. With each theory, as we study a theory this week, the theories that we study, you need to go in and you need to fill out what you believe, rate each of those theories in those areas, and all of the powers and sensitivity. So fill out your sheet. You've got a Word document. Just type in one, two, three. Is it strong, weak? I mean, is it weak, adequate, or strong for each of the powers and each of the sensitivities? Okay. So is it your beliefs it, that you're? Yes. It okay. is. It is. You. It is subjective, but it should be based on what you've learned. Okay. So it, if some, if, so you could have missed something in your own evaluation. Maybe when you were reading, you missed some piece of evaluation. Some, but it is less important to me if you find uh, the right number because there is that part of it is actually pretty subjective, right? Like, it's not that you're trying to get to the right number. It's that you're looking at each of these areas and you're deciding, does that theory really have it here or not? Okay. Then, at the end of the semester, you're going to answer two questions. The first question is going to be, which theory had the highest, the strongest rating? Just by numbers. But when you look down those numbers, not on what you care about or how you operate, but based on the numbers, which one was the strongest and which one was the weakest? You just write in those answers, those names, the names of the theories, and that number two, right? But then number three, you write an explanation of uh, if this your assessment of strongest and weakest does it line up with what you you believe to be true? Okay. Because you might have uh, less uh, the person's uh, existential theory. It's not a theory rich in techniques, but you could you might. By the end of the semester, feel like having that really strong philosophical framework for practice and how you make meaning that you can't do counseling without that. That is absolutely core to how you practice. And the techniques are less relevant to you. But for you, existential is strongest. It's the most important and it's what what can't be left behind, right? Even though it may not have come out as strongest, if you felt like CBT really had clear techniques and clear processes and all on all the powers it was pretty strong right so we'll talk about that piece of it again does your own assessment of strongest and weakest weak, weakest um, match how the numbers fell out 
we'll talk about that piece of it again. But for right now, what I want to make sure you understand is that each week, you should be evaluating those theories using that chart. All right. It forces you to look for those elements in the chapter. That, in turn, will, it'll help you. <laughs> that, in turn, will help you better understand the theories, and it will help you on components like those powers line up to some components that get asked about on the National Council exam in your uh, It forces you to look at the theories in a way that's, that's really pretty helpful long term. Mm -hmm. that's, And the other thing, the other assignment that we will talk about in an ongoing fashion throughout the class, like this, and, and you can always post questions about this too, right? And, and remember, like if anybody ever posts a question and you know the answer, tell it, give it to them. We're a community of learners together. So, so when you have the information, please, please share. But the other assignment, big assignment for this class is that theoretical conceptual model. Uh, we work heavily in metaphor in this program in terms of how you, um, in your practice, like helping clients. One of the things that we have believed to be true, faculty and clinicians, is that helping your clients gain insight into how, into what's going on with them and how to be more functional. Uh, metaphor is a helpful technique for that, but it's a hard technique to teach. Something that people seem to use. Um, no matter where you start, everybody gets better with the use of metaphor and helping clients to like make those connections. It's, it's harder to teach it directly. So in this class, we start out, uh, this class is one of your first introductions to kind of that process. So when we think about that theoretical framework, you're going to develop an artifact at the end of the class that really represents your theoretical framework and you'll explain it to me. We have a student who's a pilot. She um, she flies, and she's a pilot, and uh, she uses the parts of a plane and the process of flight as as her artifacts. She came in and she explained you know, how the, the different, like some different foundational components of flight. She talked about those pieces and how they fit with parts of theories that matter to her and that she thinks she needs for lift off with a client. That was really pretty beautiful, and it, um, it makes you kind of connect back what you're learning professionally with your personal in a way that helps you start bringing those pieces of your identity together, okay? So that part is probably just confusing right now, but it will become more clear. It'll unfold more clearly as we move through the class, all right? Do you have any questions? And I need to make sure I'm toggling back and forth between our um, our uh, our other uh, chat session too, because I'm sure I may have missed a question. If you have any questions right now, um, oh, Lindsay, I'm going to answer one of Lindsay's questions in the chat, and then I'm going to allow you. If you have any questions right now that you'd like to ask, this is a great time to do that. Lindsay said, so we can take the time to figure out which theory we truly believe and want to use in our practice. Absolutely. And it is subjective. Yes. Uh, so that theoretical ass assessment is, uh, is subjective, but it's subjective in the sense that you have to make your own um, you have an informed perspective. It's not subjective like a person could just say, so CBT is very heavy in techniques. So you can say CBT is very weak in techniques. Like if you say that, then you're just kind of off base. It doesn't mean you're going to make a terrible grade on the assignment. If you explain your perception really well, then make, make it make it. But it's, it's a pretty, it's kind of a long shot, right? So it should be an informed perspective. It is that it's from an informed perspective. Okay, what questions do we have? great on the chat. I appreciate you doing the chat too because um, I mean not, those of you who I can see face to face there's no doubt you participated right here you are this part is over here. made it and then the ones that are in the chat is no doubt you participated either. thank you so if you're listening out there and you know you haven't made a post it's probably be a really good idea to so I can know that you're here any any questions about the class or about the program or um, graduate assistantships or anything that you might have a question about right now? I have a question. Um, for the, the practicum, I, I don't know what a practicum is. I, I do know um, 
do we have to know right now like about our internship and stuff because i'm i'm kind of stressing out a little bit yes you <laughs> have to know to know that right now it is okay to feel stressed about it because okay. it goes really i know it's 60 semester hours but they they go by in a flash it's okay to feel stressed but we can also alleviate the much you do not have to know about your internship right now and um for, okay for most ever for most people here now for some of you who are going to uh, get on with the uh, who, there are a couple of you in this class who knew that the way the cohort tracked, a cohort that started last spring, the way it tracked would be it, it nicely in step with some of your own things. So for you, you're in a little different boat with practicum because you will be going into practicum in the fall because we're stepping you in line with that cohort. But for most people who are not going into that cohort, they're not trying to step in line with that cohort, and that's most of you, you would not be going into practicum in the fall. You'll be doing the counseling skills and techniques class. So you still have another semester after you get summer one, summer two, and fall to determine where you might want to do a practicum. And for most people, what they do with practicum is they try okay. their secondary, they do their practicum in their secondary professional specialization. So uh, do you know, okay. Carolyn, do, do you know what you'd like to specialize in right now? Like clinical I mental think health? My, my first choice. Which was that one, and then my second one was the um, college, and, yeah. uh, co the college um, counseling. Perfect, course. perfect. So what will be really nice would be if we can get you in a student affairs and college counseling placement for practicum in the spring. That should be really easy. And, and no matter where you are, even if you're outside of Greenville, it, like anybody, this is for like everyone. If, if you happen to be outside of Greenville, we can usually still find help you identify. Like you, the student has a responsibility for making connections with the placement and having some conversation to make sure they can work there. We can help people get an, some ideas of places to start, even if you're outside of it. So, so are, there, are there a lot of positions available at ACU for the student affairs um, practicum? For practicums? Yes, yes. We have people all the time who would like to have a practicum. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah, there, there are a lot of options there. And if you're doing a graduate assistantship on campus, sometimes we can dovetail those together or put you, or if you know that you want to do a student affairs and college counseling placement and you don't have a graduate assistantship yet, but you want one, you might be able to find one that seems like a good fit for doing a graduate assistantship and connecting with that same office for a practical placement. Okay. We can't always do that, but sometimes we can, and that helps with your scheduling. For the graduate assistantship positions, um, I know we have to wait till we have 12 credit hours, or I think that's what you have to do. That'd be in good standing. Um, is it too early now to, to uh, send you our resume and start with me? No? It is not too early now to send your resume. And I can um, and, uh, try to uh, connect. What we what we do typically, you can go through Hire a Pirate and explore graduate assistantships. So you can apply for them. But sometimes people come to us and tell us, I'm going to need a graduate assistant to follow. Do you have anybody? Our students are really good. We've, we've had um, only, we have had very rare occasions where we had any difficulty with graduate assistants. And so a lot of different programs and departments, particularly those universities, come to us and ask for um, some recommendations to send students their way. So what we typically do, we don't have, we, we only have a few graduate assistantships in the department. But what we do is when you send me your like paragraph five and your resume, and I send those around to people that I know are searching for those assistants. And then they will usually email you and say, hey, contact me and send me the X, Y, Z. Or, hey, contact me. I'd like to talk to you a little further about an assistantship opportunity you have. So I've got toy guns. So, so, so. <laughs> we're going to win. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Somebody else had a question here about... No, did somebody else have a question about graduate assistantships or something like that that I missed before we move on from there? Yeah, Jeannie, Jeannie has a question. Oh, hey. I made it. Yes, Lanisha, it's so nice to see you. This is wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still here at my work, so you'll see random kids coming up to me. Oh, yeah. Hi, Lanisha. I'm pretty much, I have here, except for they're not random, I just have them. Um, 
Okay, so we had a question from Jeannie about the college Center for Counseling and Student Development. Center for Counseling and Student Development have, they have just a couple of assistantships, and um, what they have are assistantships that are tied to a particular uh, uh, program they were running with substance abuse counseling. So that's why their psych students are in there all the time because they have doctoral level students and they're able to pull those in. But for master's level counseling or, or um, health, uh, behavioral health profession, right now they only have one or two slots for Just just for the uh, the feedback, but uh, the noise feedback, but. Um, so they've been taking only substance abuse counseling students, and they it's, we also have a substance abuse counseling program in or substance abuse social work program in substance abuse counseling. But right now, Center for Counseling Development has just a couple of slots, and they've partnered with rehab studies. And they've got one of their counselors who teaches the rehab studies, a substance abuse class. And so it's part of like it's, it's looped into that process. So that's why we don't we don't have any placements right now in the Center for Counseling and Student Development. But we do have other places. Okay, if you're working full time as a high school as any teacher, you're working full time in the school, um, but you have to complete your practicum at the school where you work. You do not have to complete your practicum at the school where you work. You uh, for practicum, it ends up being like six to eight hours. At what I plan, I always tell my advisees to do is book in eight hours a week for your practicum site, because that way, if you have a week that you have the flu, you have a hurricane, or some other something comes up, and you have days missed. You're not stressed because you've been getting a few more hours than you need every week, right? But to be on track to get enough hours by the end of the semester. For practice, you have to get 100 hours. So you can do that in a day at a site or a couple of evenings there at a site or afternoon. With your 100 hours, 60% um, of those hours, at least 60% of those hours have to be spent in direct service. So there are many different configurations you can do that work with your full uh, works, your regular work schedule and um, your, your clinical hours for the practical experience. If you know you work full-time in a school setting, one of the things that we typically see is people um, go to somewhere that has either some e afternoon and evening hours or weekend hours so that they're able to um, keep their hours pretty separate with no challenges from their, their principal or release time out of the class. You should talk to your advisor. If you know that you're in a situation where you um, it's gonna take pretty careful planning around your practicum hours, you go on and start talking to your advisor now. That'll help. Graduate assistant, one question I see in the um, the chat bar, is there a graduate assistant? Assistant is the same thing as a work study. They're actually two different things. Work study is a federally funded program that people have to qualify for. Grad, uh, in terms of financial aid and status processes, um, graduate assistantships are like a part they kind of run like a part-time job you're hired for. There are some academic eligibility requirements, uh, but um, I can talk to any of you on a case-by-case -case basis about that. Uh, it's uh, with, with those assistantships, they are in partnered. You do an assistantship with some academic department or program on campus or in one of the like satellite community-based sites, if they have assistantships there, some of, some of we do have those. Um, mm -hmm. you do, uh, either if it's part time, it's ten hours a week. If it's full time, it's twenty or twenty up to twenty five hours a week. But twenty is what a, a standard part time is, and it, it pays. They pay pretty well. Well, I mean, they, they pay well for part time work. It's looped into your professional uh, training. You know, it makes it, it it connects you to the campus community. So they're usually pretty helpful. Right. We had a couple of questions about the Give Me Fives. And it was, um, it looks like they're just questions like, just kind of talk about the Gimme Five. Was there a specific question? Uh, right now, does anybody have a specific question about the Gimme Five? Okay, with the Gimme Five, what I ask is that you be as creative as you can be so it will, and share information with us that it's not information we would just get directly from our own readers. So it's an opportunity to explore a, um, one of the theories in a little more depth than, than the others and present that in a creative way. It helps us remember important elements of the theory. Okay? So 
uh, whatever it is you think is important to share for your theory, you share that. And uh, sometimes people do PowerPoint. Sometimes people do the, um, uh, oh, there's one, there's this thing that people really like. It's like, it looks like little comic strip characters. And they, they're, they're different. You can use whatever tech tools that you like or however you like to present your Give Me Five. It's got to be saved as a video and posted um, in our discussion. Had people dress up as William Glasser. I've also had people rap. <laughs> and then I've had people do little caricature, caricature folks or whatever that it does. And then people that just do PowerPoints and kind of uh, talk voiceover, narrate the PowerPoint. But no more than five minutes. If for some reason it runs over a couple, you know, just a little, that's that's fine. But um, it's not intended to be extremely late. Anything else? Well, I appreciate you participating with me tonight. I am really sorry that my um, the accident. Probably I don't have another adult here right now. So sorry about that. Play in the middle, but uh, I appreciate the opportunity to participate with you like this. And we will have a couple more of these as we go on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You can also use this. This is completely free. Google Hangouts completely free. So when you have group projects, it is a really easy way to be able to look at each other and have a kind especially if you do this, like this version where those of you who are in the video chat, it's a really easy, free way to have um, a conversation with the group. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Good night.